Hello and welcome to another video. In this one, I want to talk about comprehensions, which are a special syntax in Python for writing essentially inline for loops. Uh, and I'm going to show you a silly example of them, but hopefully you can you know, extrapolate that silly example to other stuff as well. Uh, so without further ado, let's jump into it. Okay, so for the sake of this problem, we're going to make a very, very silly program here. Uh, this program is going to have an input of some multi-level list, and I want to square all of the numbers and flatten them into a single list and skip odds or something like that. So we're, we're gonna make a, a silly example there. Uh, so let's say we have inputs are, you know, that multi-level list, so one, two, three, four, five, and maybe we have six and 80, and I don't know, 999, or that's, that's much bigger than that. 105. You get the idea. So just, you know, a bunch a bunch of lists here. Oops. Um, and what I wanted to do is turn this into just a flat list. So this is currently a list of lists. Uh, and so one way that I might do this is say like output equals a list and we would loop over the inputs for, for a sub list in inputs. And then we would say, you know, we would loop over each number in here so for number in sub list. And then maybe we had a square function. Square. Normally I would write this in line, but I want to actually show you some uh, some interesting parts of this in a second. Uh, square x integer to integer. I guess it would be float to integer. That seems fine. Float to float. That way it accepts all sorts of numbers. Return x times x. Sure. And we would maybe do output dot append square. Uh, number. And so this might be how I would write this. Uh, oh, we only wanted to do evens, right? So if number mod two is equal to zero, then we output the number. And you'll notice like as you go deeper and have more conditions here, uh, you know, <laughs> you get this kind of arrow shaped code or triangle shaped code as you have to indent a bunch. Maybe we added another constraint here that the list had to be longer than three or something. So if len of sublist is greater than or equal to three, then then we do all of this. So you, know, you can imagine this this quickly shoots off the right side of your screen. Uh, but this does work. If we print output, you'll see that when we run this python t dot pi, uh, you know it filtered out all of the odds. So we didn't square one, we didn't square three, but we did square two and four. Uh, it also skipped these two lists here because, you know, they were less than our length requirement here. Uh, and then finally we got, you know, 100 squared twice. And so this works. Uh, however, this has some problems, like, you know, it's it's a little bit clunky to read. And unfortunately, for loops are a little bit slow in Python compared to what we're about to do. And the reason they're slightly slow is the interpreter has to actually interpret them, whereas comprehensions, uh, there are special opcodes built into the interpreter such that it doesn't have to do as much, you know, manual parsing of, of, the, of the code at runtime. Uh, but anyway, this this is the, the for loop version. I wanna show you how we would convert this into a comprehension. And fortunately, it's actually very easy if you've started by writing the for loop code. So I'm just gonna keep this around so that we can compare the two in a second. Um, but I'm actually going to copy and paste this because it's going to make it, it's going to be very simple to do this. Um, and the way you write a comprehension, we're going to start by doing a list comprehension. I'll show you the other comprehension types in a second. So we're going to start by putting brackets around this. I usually like to have one indent uh, compared to my actual bracket. And then you're just going to dedent each of these so that they line up. So like this. And then instead of appending, we're going to move the append up to the top. And that's that's the equivalent list comprehension here. So, oh, we have to move all the colons too, of course. And so list comprehension is basically an output segment followed by a number of, followed by at least one for statement, and then followed by ifs and fors. And the ifs and fors can be in any order. And... Um, you know, you can have as many of these as you want. Most list comprehensions that I see don't have additional ifs and fors, um, but I wanted to show you this as kind of kind of a more complicated example. And this will actually execute exactly the same as this loop does up here. So, you know, it'll do this outer for, then it'll check this sublist, 
then it'll check, uh, or then it'll loop through this sublist. Then it will check if it's even, and finally it will append a value if it's squared, or it'll append the squared value there. And so, you know, basically, basically works the same as, um, you know, your for loop here. And uh, any of these ifs and for conditions can access any of the values that are above it. So, you know, uh, except for this one, I guess. <laughs> so like this sub list was the loop variable of this, but we can access it in this if statement here. And like the number was the loop of this, but we can access it in the if statement down here. Uh, we can also, you know, add more if conditions here. So maybe like if number is less than 100. And so that would, that would filter it out more, but um, Again, you, you don't have to have one of each type. You can have as many as you want. Uh, but if we run this again, you'll see that we still get the same result. Okay, so that's that's complicated comprehensions. <laughs> There's also, you know, you're gonna have them much simpler without these. Uh, and this is list comprehension. So list comprehensions are the ones with square brackets. Uh, there are also set comprehensions, dictionary comprehensions, and generator expressions. Um, and I'll go over each of those. The first and the easiest when we're talking about list comprehensions is set comprehensions. And a set comprehension uses curly braces instead of square brackets, and it will produce a set as the output instead of a list. So you'll see here we got you know a list, so any duplicates were kept uh, with our set comprehension, and sets are unordered, so that's why the order is you know different here. Um, all the duplicates are eliminated. So set comprehensions are kind of useful if you need to build a set and you know, you can do that in this kind of this compact um, syntax here. Next is generator expressions, uh, which uses parentheses instead of square brackets or curly braces. And you'll actually get this generator object out. And what a generator is, is it's kind of a lazy list or a lazy iterator. Uh, you won't actually see the values until you iterate over them. So if we put a print in our square up here, print, I'm squaring or something like that. Uh, when we run our generator here, you'll see that we didn't actually, we didn't ever run the square function, and we don't get that until we start iterating over it. So if we, you know, ask for one value from uh, from our output here, you'll see that now it is squared one value, and we've got one value out. But we're, we still have a generator here. We still haven't, you know, exhausted that. Um, but, you know, if you loop over everything in that generator for thing in generator, or for thing in output, uh you'll see that it you know it'll it'll jump execution between you know running this comprehension here and running our loop down here it's kind of a little bit of a coroutine um, i actually talked about generators in a previous video so I'll, I'll link more about generators here this is a generator expression though and so you can kind of see here it bounces back and forth between running our square function and you know printing our output that's generator comprehensions, and the last type is dictionary comprehensions. Um, and dictionary comprehensions are also done with curly braces, which can make them a little bit confusing. Uh, but you use a key value expression as the first part. So you can say, uh, maybe we're mapping the number to its square or something. And so this will be the key for anything in the output, and this will be the value for all of these things. Um, and you can see now, comment this out. Uh, we'll get a dictionary as our output. Um, <laughs> well, I'm square. <laughs> I need to delete that. Uh, we'll get a dictionary in our output, and you can see that it, the key is mapped to its squared value. So anyway, those are the the three type of comprehensions uh, that currently exist, as well as kind of their equivalent uh, for loop and if statement form, and how you can kind of convert between the two. Uh, but hopefully this was useful. If you have additional things you want me to explain, leave a comment below or reach out to me on the various platforms. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you in the next one.